This will be lecture 7 of our Machine Learning 101 lecture series and today we are going to be talking about overfitting and underfitting. Don't forget we are still discussing regression and regression is under supervised learning which is a subcategory of machine learning. So today this class which is overfitting and underfitting comes directly from linear regression and also polynomial regression which are the two preceding classes before this one. So I recommend you go ahead to follow them if you have not actually gone through them. So let's see what we are talking about. So in regression, we are trying to determine the equation of a line. We can use linear regression if we assume that there is a linear relationship between them. We can simply say the relationship is simply y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1x. In that case, we determine the coefficient of regression, which is beta 0 and beta 1 and plug it in and we have the function very easily. Now in polynomial regression, we now assume that the relationship is polynomial. In that case, if we set the coefficient to end with w0 or beta0 and beta1, we also have a linear relationship, but if we extend it a little more, we have a polynomial relationship. Now we have this function y x w is equal to w0 plus w1 x plus w2 x squared plus plus uh, w n x n okay let's call it w n x n you can you can use m okay so it's consistent so w m x m now, when you use this equation and you calculate the value of y given the value of x, it's no guarantee that the value of y you calculate will be perfectly correct. So you calculate the value of y, which is not exactly the same as the value that should have been in the data set. Let's illustrate. So let's assume you have this data set. We have, we have x and we have y. I will have x1, x2, x3, all the way to xn. Uh, okay, let me let me see if I can do a better job here. Let's take out this as well. I need you to pay attention, possibly take pain along. Uh, not good job. Okay, we'll have t, so we'll have t1, t2 t3, tn. So when you use this method, you calculate a value of y, which is y x w, okay? Let's say this w is in, in, in bold, which means it's a, it's a vector of all the coefficients. Now, this w is not the same as T. If I if we attach the coefficient, let's say n, uh, let's say okay for each, let's say for one for x one, it's not the same as t one, because normally if you calculate y for x one, it should be exactly t one, but it's not the same. In the same way, if you calculate y for x two using w. It's not exactly the same as for T2, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. What it then means is that there is an error that follows you along every calculation you made. So that error is given by Y of X. For X1, that error is this, minus T1. So this is the error that follows along. Also, if you calculate x2, you have an error that says x2 w minus t2. So this is error. This is error for every calculation you make. This is error. the error you get. All right. So now it means that we can actually sum up these errors to have an error function. Let me see if I can move this downwards. So if we sum up these errors, okay, I could write it at this point. We have an error function in this way. We have the 
total error will be giving us from i is equal to 1 to n for each of them you have you then have uh, the error that you calculate will be uh, sorry I'm going to undo this okay so this is freezing but I'm going to open it a second okay it's opening up all right so So what we are saying is that there is a total error given by, okay, so actually it have taken out everything, but it's okay. So the total error will now be given by error when y is calculated for x, uh, xi, and w uh, minus ti. So now this error is a problem and we are trying to find a way to eliminate it or to minimize it. Now let's see there is a, a relationship between this error we are we are having let me just call it the E error. This error we have in each calculation there's a relationship between this error and M. M is the order of the polynomial right so I'm going to now give a little introduction so from my website, let's see some theory of what we are saying. All right, I hope it's clear now. So let's assume that this is any polynomial of order m. We want to understand what happens when the order gradually increases from zero to 13. For zero, we have a constant value for y. So you have y is equal to w zero because x power zero is one. So we have w uh, m is equal to zero, m is equal to one, m is equal to two. What happens when you continue increasing? Assume that the w times are constant. Remember, our goal is to ensure that this polynomial fits the data set. That is, after plotting the data set in a scatter plot, we fit a polynomial through it. Now, how is m related to e? Also, recall that we would like to minimize the error term e of x and w. This is the difference between the predicted value and the actual value, which I already showed you. Now, when m increases, the error decreases, meaning that if the more you are increasing the order of the polynomial, the more you are getting close to what the data set actually is. So for very little value of m, you have a larger error, meaning that the polynomial curve will actually not fit the line very well. But if you keep increasing the value of m, you have a better fitting to the data set. So similarly, when m is low, the complexity of the model reduces, meaning that the, the modes, uh, meaning that the modes becomes kind of, the model, so this actually model becomes kind of simple. So what we are saying is when m is low, we have maybe a linear relationship, maybe only two or three times, and the, the model you are creating is simple. Well, assuming you have put several values of m, m1, m2, m3, you have x, x to the power 3, x to the power x squared, x1. So the more you increase the order of this polynomial, the more the model becomes complex. But in the same time, the more you have more accurate model that fits your data. So that is something you need to think uh, think uh, about. Now let's see what happens when m is really very low. So if the order of this polynomial you are choosing is very low, what happens to your data? If m is very low, then the polynomial will not be able to properly model the relationship between the variables. So assuming that m is zero, in that case we have y is equal to w zero. A constant. If y is a constant, what we simply have is a straight line, a straight horizontal line. And a straight horizontal line is useless when you are talking about a something that might be a polynomial curve or even a, trig a trigonometric relationship. 
So this is one problem we run into, that is when m is really low, we are trying to make the problem simple to solve, we want to make the, the model to be simple so that you can solve it easily, and you choose m to be very low, maybe 0 or 1, and then the polynomial curve becomes a straight line, and then it doesn't actually model the original data. Now running out of time, we are going to continue in the next lesson and we are going to now discuss more on when m is very low, what really will be the problem. So we'll see in the next class.